It is the 24th of May, 2017, and that can mean only one thing. It is episode 8 of Boruto, The Dream's Revelation. A pretty plot-filled episode this week, although there's not too much going on, but the plot furthers, if that makes sense. Anyway, let's jump straight into story. We start off this episode uh, with a very weird kind of cold opening for the first 30 seconds of a strange man kind of looking at the moon or possibly the earth and talking about, I assume, Boruto, saying that he's very important and stuff like that. And then after the opener, uh, the next two slides are just basically for the first five or six minutes of this episode, it's just Shikadai, Boruto and Mitsuki going over the past events of the last few episodes. So I didn't really get many screenshots here, but I did get one or two. They're just talking about the cases of the possession. And then later on, we see Boruto talking with Shikadai just about the eye and what it means and possibly that it could be the Byakugan, but he's not sure. And then later that night, when he returns home, Boruto has a really weird dream where he sees... I think it's the man from the start of the episode, but I can't be sure. He sees him and the man tells Boruto that he is destined for greatness and he has great power lying within him, ready to awaken. Stuff like that, quite vague, but still kind of meaningful in a way. So after that, Boruto wakes up with his odd possession eye thing activated already in his right eye and thinks that he's awakened the great power of the Byakugan, which leads to a couple of minutes of Boruto acting really weird, which is quite funny. He's very overdramatic. Chun, Chunbyu, I think? Chunbyu? I can't remember the name of it, but the kind of Japanese thing of being overdramatic and very manly and show-offy, if that makes sense. This is inspired by the main character of the movie that him and the others went to see at the start of the episode that I haven't shown screens of yet because I'm going to discuss it in extras. But this is kind of probably Boruto being really confused about things and because he's so unsure of it, the memory of the movie he watched kind of seeps into his dreams maybe and convinces him then that he's this superhero. So after a while of acting really weird and Naruto coming home because he's really tired and stuff, he kind of confronts Boruto about why he's acting so weird. And Boruto replies that it's probably the Byakugan that he reckons he's awakened it. Naruto and everyone else seems a little sceptical about this. There is a passing little thing that Naruto mentions that Himawari has activated the Byakugan already. Anyway, they decide that the best way to find out if Boruto has acted actually activated the Byakugan is to go and see his grandfather as in not Minato but Hinata's father um, the head of the Hyuga clan so after talking a bit with the head of the Hyuga clan he basically tells Boruto that it's very unlikely he's activated the Byakugan as you'd have to go through an intense amount of training which Boruto clearly hasn't but anyway giving him the benefit of the doubt he does challenge him to a battle to try and test whether it is that Boruto has awakened it and that is the end of the episode it go- it flows really well into itself if that makes sense there's no real part of the episode that felt that it is just dragging its feet but it went so fast that by this point i was expecting a few minutes more but it seems that the rest of the plot will be next time which brings me to the slide of next time did i say next time enough anyway yeah the next episode is literally just exactly following on from this one which is cool it'll be really interesting to see if this eye thing really does have any link to the byakugan i don't think it is a byakugan but it could be some kind of hybrid i think maybe between naruto's bloodline and hinata's bloodline kind of mixing but who knows i don't know it it could be anything so stay tuned for next week Also, just to add before I do continue with this, uh, I shan't be making an episode next week because I will be away. I I won't be home in time to record it because I think I'll be home next Monday or something, which will just be a day or two before the episode afterwards. So I'm just going to skip that one and review episode 10, if that's okay with everyone. Even if it's not okay with everyone, I'm still going to do it. Anyway, let's jump into Extras and Theories. As I mentioned, the plot of this episode kind of flowed in one succinct way. There wasn't any little breakups or little mini plots going on. 
It, so, as you'd imagine, there wasn't many extras. The first three slides I'm going to show you are just the movie that they went to see, which is kind of plot relevant, actually, because it kind of influences how Boruto acts later on in the episode. Also, he wears the same eye mask as this guy from the movie, which is cool. It is a very cool eye mask and reminds me of Kamina from Gurren Lagan. And yeah, the main character of this movie kind of seems to possess the Sharingan, it seems, because he has a weird glowing red eye and also the ability to kind of stop time almost the screen goes inverted and then he quickly runs around taking out all the bad guys so it kind of seems like it's inspired by the Sharingan or maybe the Byakugan who knows and the next slide because I love little attentions to detail this was one I noticed which is Boruto basically has almost exactly a Game Boy it looks almost identical to one there's very little difference and it even comes in the shade of purple that the Game Boy colour did, for sure, so that's that's pretty cool. You can also kind of see game carts strewn around. They're not very distinct, but we can still see that they are invariably game carts, which is cool, and they seem to kind of be Game Boy carts and Game Boy Advance carts, judging by the size. Or maybe DS carts, I can't quite tell. But regardless, this is quite a nice little bit of detail for a scene that we see for maybe four seconds or something, so that's pretty cool. And then the last slide is Hanabi. Yay, we see Hanabi when she's grown up. I don't know, maybe some of you watching don't even know who Hanabi is. She's kind of a background Hyuga character. She's Hinata's little sister and played a big part in Naruto the Last, the movie, or Naruto the Last movie, whatever you want to call it. But it's kind of cool to see her grown up and stuff, and she seems to be a part of the next episode as well. That about wraps it up for this episode, and I'm just going to add one or two extra little things I liked about it. The first one is that I like how Mitsuki has become kind of, not a joke character, but he's kind of got a comedic side to him in that he creeps up on everyone and they don't realise he's there. I quite like that little touch. It does give him a bit more characterization than just the weird snake kid, or the one they talk to when the plot thickens. It's kind of cool. And finally I've got to add that this is the first episode that I can remember that doesn't have a possession in, or isn't about possession which is kind of cool. I mean, it is kind of all about possession if you think about it, but it is nice that the last seven episodes have led up to this and this is kind of a boiling point that everyone has realised, okay, that's enough possessions, we really need to do something about it now. So it is cool and slightly relieving to see that Boruto wasn't going to be 20 to 30 episodes of the possession of the week kind of things before they finally have enough. That about wraps it up. Thank you very much for watching. It's been quite a quick episode this week because a lot of ha a lot of things happened, but they happened really quickly, one after each other, and with a lot of focus on each plot point, so there wasn't much to talk about, really. So, as I mentioned, I will be back in two weeks' time to review episode 10, as I will not be around to review episode 9. But until then, goodbye. <laughs>